So here we have the Marantz CD48, which is one of four CD players made by Philips, featuring the so-called Magic DAT, the TD1549 DAC, which has this amazing sound. It's like uh, people say it's analogs like, I think it's valve like almost really. Uh, and it, it does certainly gives a new tone to strings in particular, and you can hear it on voices to a certain extent too. Uh, I find it's great with all kinds of music, but perhaps just a little too much. I want to see where I can go in modifying this player. So in a moment, I'll look inside the player and I'll show you what I intend to do. And we'll see how it goes and what the result is. By the way, the I've been looking inside already and the, the front is off. For anyone tells me the uh, disc tray there but I'll put that back on eventually uh, the difference main difference between the Marantz and the Philips equivalent uh, this is a, a equivalent to a Philips player is that the Marantz has a, a nicer face here, here. and uh, inside they use a few of Eleanor Silmic and Seraphine caps in the power supply stage primarily which I, I, when more experience has shown that it gives a small uh, benefit in sound, it's not vast. I think people go too far in ascribing magical properties to the quality of caps. Sorry, but that's how I feel. Mods like I'm going to do make a lot more difference. See you in a moment. So, here we have the underside of the main board which is the ball with the DAC on and everything else. And this is the actual DAC chip here, the famous DAC. As Lampizer says, doesn't that seem much? At the bottom of that DAC, you'll see that uh, 100 nanotharad ceramic cap. It's a quality ceramic I've used there. Uh, Philips data for the DAC says that there should be 100 nano. Uh, chip capacitor there for the uh, reference pin uh, in the Marantz implementation there is nothing except a 47 micro capacitor on the other side of the board I've put an improved electrolytic capacitor a, a low uh, ESR one now here these two wires here, the yellow, is the positive supply for the DAC, the new one. And the uh, white one, connected to the earth there, is the uh, earth ground for the supply for the DAC. It needs to go to a wire here, which is going to go off and plug into my new DAC board. So, that's all the mods on this side of the wood, except here. These two wires are going to the outputs and the positions for these holes. I'll show you on the other side of the board where they go. So, there you go. So this cap here, we've got a Silmic cap there electrolytic and a high quality film cap underneath in series one for each channel one pair for each channel go into the wires and the two wires go out there and also on the side of the board here near the DAC these caps here that green one there goes to the reference pin I just mentioned on the other side and these three here Higher value are actually 470 microfarad here. See how we get on with that. Where they were 47 before. And these are low ESR quality caps. And uh, these are decoupling the three elements of the power supply on the DAC chip, which are the analog section, the op amp section, and the digital section. So and Philips data says they should all be 
supplied from the same supply. So uh, that's the best you can do, really. Make sure they're well decoupled like that. We'll see how it goes later. And that is about it for the mods on this board mode. I will show you in a moment the that power supply I've made. So here is the chassis of the uh, Marantz CD48. Strip down, front panels removed. You need to remove a lot to get to the main board in this. You really do. One interesting thing about this thing is that connects to a switch on the front panel. Move that out of the way. You can see the two fuses there. Now, usually in high quality audio, that would switch the mains on and off, but not here. The mains is fixed to this transformer, and what that switch over here actually switches is the secondary of the transformer which means that the whole time that this cd player is plugged into the mains that transformer is live and operating and presumably dissipating heat only a minute amount but still wasting power now here's my new board i guess some audio files would call this a flea supply which is for the DAC uh, only. Remember the DAC has two op amps on the output. Quite amazing, how can you have op amps with five volts? Interesting. What does that do? And this is like uh, only 0.3 amp, but uh, I mean, that's well more than the DAC needs. In total count, well, it's a straightforward, simple thing. Knocked up on these boards, and um, it uses a uh, simple five volt chip regulator. You can use this LM317 with resistors to set the voltage. Some people will say it's a lower output impedance, and therefore better sound. Oh, my dad. I've also here using a simple bridge rectifier. I could change that for soft recovery, high speed diodes, and you'd hear a difference. Probably not. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to put it all together. It's been wrong. I've still got to connect these wires here to the mains here. Let's transform here. Now, underside this board, these wires are soldered on. <clears throat> and there is a worry that they could touch the chassis there, which would then be alive. So I am going to replace the mains cable and connect an earth to the chassis. I don't know why they don't do it anyway. Yeah. So, so we are a better quality go. It's, it's more hassle, but I think it's for the best. And I'll be back later. To show you how it all goes. So here we are inside the player with the DAC power supply fitted and the current mods in operation as you can see from the CD here I have been testing it. I was not happy with this idea of this power supply just being switched on the secondary because when I put my DAC supply in it means that too would have to be on permanently. Now other people have done these kinds of mods for these super DAC players. I've put a switch on the back panel there. I don't like that. I don't like that they have two switches. One of my aims in these modifications here was to retain as much of the functionality of this CD player as possible. And for that reason, these caps connect directly to the pin output pins of the DAC. But the op amps, the, the small little blue ones you can see there, they are the caps that were already there which go to the op amp. So basically both the op amp and my caps are tapping off that DAC. I don't think that's affected the sound quality adversely one iota, but it does mean 
is a wire going from here across over to here which is the headphone board where there's another little op amp and it doesn't mean I now have still have headphone function and the quality of that headphone will have the advantage of the improved power supply to the DAC but it will not have the advantage of bypassing that output op amp which I'm going to highlight to you there JLC stands for, I believe, for Japan, Japan Radio Corporation. Uh, yes, as I was saying, I was not happy with this idea of switching that and leaving my supply on all the time. So I have modified this main switch here quite drastically, actually. Because this main, this switch now, it, it wasn't, it is a main switch now, but it wasn't before. It is now a main switch. And it the mains comes in, and as you can see, I've got a three core cable there, earthed here on the transformer, securely earthed. So should any live wire hit the chassis, the fuse will blow. Uh, I was worried about hum here. There is not one smidgen of hum anywhere from these. They need the output anyway, not the input. And I'll neaten up these wires a bit later with some cable ties. And there it is. And there's the finished thing. With this set of mods anyway. I've also actually dampened the case. You can see some damping there. And on the cover. Two sheets of damping. This is a bitumen. Tar-like substance. And believe it or not, what I use... It's something you can buy almost anywhere, which is used for fixing gutters and things like that, and sealing joints on roofs. It works great in hi-fi. You can tap that. It's a boxy sound there, not a metallic sound. This chassis, this cover fits on the chassis here and here, and that reinforces itself, so there's no need to stick anything on the end there at all. And that is it. And what do you get for this? Well, what you get is astonishing detail. Reverberations in concerts die away softly to nothing. You hear all sorts of reverberation where you didn't think it existed. You hear quality which you didn't think existed. Instruments are pinpoint precisely in space. Voices come out of nowhere. Uh, there's no movement. Everything is stable. And I also found the bass is a lot tighter as well. There is a slight gain in the upper registers and the mid-range. But the main thing is in that detail, astonishing detail. And to me, this chip is perhaps a little bit too musical. And this addition of detail and bass helps to even things out a bit in that respect, I think. It makes it much more, it is an astonishing experience with such a cheap CD player. I'm going to be modifying these and putting them on eBay soon. So watch out for that under my channel, Bob's Hi-Fi Mods. If you like this video, subscribe, of course. Like. If you have any comments, leave them below, and I will try to answer every comment I get, as long as it's absolutely possible. And uh, I'll be back soon with a new video on modifying the musical fidelity back 90, and you will be surprised just how much I then additional detail you can get out of that little baby. So, bye for now on this video about modifying the Marantz CD48 player.